<laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so oh, last Alan, I... Alan, we welcomed you. We wel Alan, we ah, welcomed see, you. See, that's why I, I had to wait for Alan to come. Welcome, Alan. Um, okay, so okay. last welcome, welcome. Last week we talked about different opinions about chuppah, and I gave out a source sheet. We went through a lot of it. I want to um, share my screen. So I'm gonna share my screen and I wanna show you the source sheet. And there's a section of it that I actually summarize kind of the opinions. So let's see. So it's actually works as a good review of last week here, uh, let's uh, make it a little bigger. Okay, so there are a bunch of opinions, um, seven opinions on what defines a chuppah. So we saw one was to bring the woman to do two things, to bring the woman into the house of the Khatan and to be alone, and for the Khatan to be alone with her and to make her exclusively his. And that's pretty much an exact quote from the Rambam, those two aspects. And the Shulchan Aruch brings it also in the first Sif. Those are two things, is to bring her into his house. So, so that means like the house has to be his. And, and she's coming into his reshoot, into his, out of her father's, for example. And then to be with her alone. That's Yehu. Then we saw uh, the Ran. Basically, if you think, if, if, if it comes out according to the Ran that he tries to divide up these um, two aspects. And he says, really, it's enough if you're alone with the woman for the purpose of marriage and not necessarily be in the man's domain. And the Ran says that, that's what we saw. The Ramban also says it in Tubo, the Drisha brings it, but, but it's, it's essentially the Ran is the, is the main source. That's what we saw. I guess the Ramban we didn't see, but that would be uh, also a good source. And then he also mentions, the Ran also mentions the opposite, that you could be in the man's house bring the woman into the man's house, even if not alone, right? So you have those two conditions. The Ram basically says either one is sufficient. Would that, have to be for, would that one have to be for the purpose of marriage, though? Like this, like a second one when it's not in his house? Yeah, yeah, it has to be. Yeah, both of these. Um, yeah, for the, you're right, I didn't write for the purpose of marriage. You bring the woman into, even if not alone. The main point is, it's for the purpose of marriage, but you're bringing her into your reshoot, so the man is bringing her into his reshoot, even though there may be other people there. This doesn't have to be the yichud requirement is not necessary. The first opinion says you could have the, this second, the other opinion, number two here, is that if yichud for the purpose of marriage, but not um, you know, in the reshoot of the, the, the place is not owned by the man. You, Yavni, you had a question? Yeah, my impression <clears throat> of the run was that he brought these two opinions. It wasn't so clear to me that the first one was his preferred opinion. It seemed to me that the second one was, was more um, like he brought the first one to explain the reasoning behind, but I don't know. Okay. I hear you. Um, but he does bring it. He brings it as, as a possibility. At least. I'm not necessarily saying he's a halacha, but as a possibility. Yeah. Um, fine. Then the Ron doesn't write. The Ron, we didn't really, he didn't really come out with a final opinion. I, I didn't think, but 100%. Um, then the fourth opinion uh, that we also saw last time was the Bala Itur. And he said, it's a special place used for the purpose of marriage, even if you're not alone and not owned by the husband. In other words, uh, if the chuppah, let's say, well, a special place, uh, you know, it could be a gazebo or some kind of uh, sukkah, but it doesn't have to be owned even by the husband. It could be like the town's wedding sukkah. 
and the town owns it and everybody uses that place. Um, and you're not alone. People are all around. But it's a purpose, the purpose of, of it is for the purpose of marriage. And that's the Baal Idra. Now, the next opinion is an opinion that the Baal Idra mentions, but rejects. Which is that, the, that a kerchief or a tali over the head of the couple. That you sort of put uh, some kind of... Well, uh, Doc, what, uh, what technical term? Is that Inuna? What is that? Oh, that's... that's well, a, it could be... What term does he use, in fact? Uh, let's check it out. Let's... Um, I think Inuma was that, uh, that, uh, that carriage, that, that sort of carried carriage that we... Well, right. We, we discussed that. The word Inuna has some different meanings, uh, has some different uh, translations. What exactly it is? Here's Bala Itter. Um, Sudar. Vahaomer Hupahi Sudar. Sudar means a, a kerchief, some kind of cloth. You know, we have Kenyan Sudar, where you lift up a, a, a handkerchief. So a kerchief. Shechofin Roshehen, that you cover their heads. Rashasa Bracha. Lav Milton. He says there's nothing. He says that's not correct. But I don't know if we saw last time, but let's see it now. It's very short anyway. Sefer Atashbets. He says the opposite. He is, he says, Masha Porsin sniff al Rosh Khatan the Kala, Bishasa Bracha. The Fisha Gam Zenik Rakini Sadakhupa. I mean, I just cut it off. I didn't give you the whole thing. But that's also called, so he holds that this sniff or sniff is the same thing as a sudar. Uh, it's like a scarf that you, um, well, I mean, a, a scarf is a seif, right? But um, I think it's the same thing. Ki chupa lashon kisui. Chupa means to cover something. Uh, we have places in the Tanakh where it's used that meaning, like uh, like the wings cover the chick, you know, or the, the, the. so chupa is a covering, so it's a cloth. Beyeshomrim al shem v'tikach at saif v'tikhes the Rivka. And there are those that say that it's based on this Pasuk by Rivka Imenu that she covered herself with a Tsaif when she saw Yitzchak, and that was in fact the Chuppah. So the Tashbits is actually the Barplukta of the Itur. Comes out. Right? Comes out. I mean, not that they necessarily read each other, but it comes out that, that they're, the, they're the two opposite opinions. The, so that's her kerchief or tali over the head of the couple and that I wrote Balha Itur in the sense that he mentions it, but doesn't hold like that. And the Tashbets, who actually holds like that, the Ramah brings that. Avud Raham also brings it, and the Maharil brings it. Yeah, but Rabbi, he doesn't say that that is Knisa Lechupa. He says the opposite. He says that that's what we do, that's the Minag. Lefisha Gamzek Nika Knisa Lechupa, meaning it's, it's another aspect like uh, being a enact in the classical chuppah <coughs> act. Well, but doesn't that mean that it, 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 if it counts as a chuppah, then it is a chuppah? I'm, I'm not really sure if that way he would go all the way through to that. that what I, that's what I mean. Like, he brings it as, a, as another aspect. I wouldn't say he's an actual bad plukta here. Um, you mean that, he, that gam, he's not... He says, gam ze, he says, gam ze nikra knisa the chuppah. It's also a type of, I mean, you're saying, he's not like he's defining, you're right. We're, this list is not intended to be that, that he only holds it, that's the only type of chuppah. But the point is, I'm just expanding the concept to all of the things that are by anybody called a chuppah. I'm just bringing out the, the I'm expanding the concept to a full extent of what could be considered a chuppah. You're right. He's not saying that this is the only thing that's a chuppah. I agree with you there. But he is saying that it is a chuppah. Uh, but I agree with you there. Um, and the final opinion here, I would say it's seven, but I see it's only six. The bride going out in a hinuma with a covering over the bride, which covers her eyes, like we find by Ruth. And th that's this pasuk that I brought over here at the top by Ruth. That's Oh, that, that you cover 
your with your wing on your maid servant. So where do we see that? That I don't think we saw last time. So let's just look at that quickly. And it's um wait, did I uh maybe I don't have wait. Uh, oh, it is. I mean, it's, it's in the Tosos. We in saw the Tosfot, it. yeah. It's the Tosos, so we did see it. It's the Tosfos where he talks about the Himnuma. Um, I'm just wondering if he brings the Pasuk. I don't think he brings the Pasuk. No, no but Rav Nachum Rashi yeah. there on, on Sefer Root, he, I think he says something like Lashon uh, Nisuim or something like that. Someone can look, mm -hmm. or someone who knows Rashi by heart on Root, maybe. But, you know. <laughs> we all do, of course. Uh, yeah, so I put it here as um, the Ramah says it in the name of Tosfot. Uh, see Rashi on Ketubot uh, 17b. So I didn't bring the source, but that is the source. I cited the source. So what is this Hinuma? Could be either a carriage. It seems like from Tosfot that that's what it is. It's a carriage, a litter going out, but um, maybe it's just a scarf. Or at least according to According to, like we saw last time, uh, Jastro, it's a, a, it's a carriage that you bring her out in. All right. Um, now I'm going to, so that's that's these sources. I'm not, the, the first three of those sound a lot more like the Cheder Yichud than they do the concept of Chuppah. Like just reading them into a house for the purpose of marriage or alone, well, not alone. What is heder yichud? Is heder yichud a halachic uh, concept independent of chuppah? It, it would, I don't know. So my, my gut, my I, gut I, tells me yes, but when I think about it, I don't really know. It's yeah. just my gut talking, not my knowledge. We do it, and it's such an integral part of the marriage, but actually it's just another chuppah. It's not a, it's, I think, uh, it's, just, it's just another chuppah. It's, it's trying to be Yotze, the Rambam, who says you need to have uh, in this house and be alone with her. So it's, it's another form of chuppah because the chuppah that we do with, the, with, a, with a, uh, a sheet on four poles is certainly not well, either anything, of these, it's not either anything of these we, things. If anything, it would be more to, to, to justify the run. Because the Cheder Yichud at any wedding hall is not in his home. It's not a place he owns. Well, actually, so some Chatanim, we don't, we don't, we're actually Machmir that the Chatan should own the Cheder Yichud, at least temporarily for that night. And in fact, if you rent a wedding hall, you're a renter. So you, you, it's your place now. If the, if the parents rented it, so then it's maybe not his place, but they rented it for him. As, so, unless the bride's parents rented it. Exactly. So the point is that the Cheder Yichud should actually be as a Chumra. I mean, as a Chumra, it should also be owned by the Chata to some, in some way. Wait, Joel, you want to say something? Yeah, no, I just, hey, Chris, maybe this is already going too into it, but the, the difference between the, the first two and the, and the, and the next four is, right, the Yichud ones are very much like just about the couple. I mean, yeah, there could be a de Yichud and there could be other people who, who know that they're in Yichud, but it's very private. And the, the next four of them are very much public, right? It's very much about the community does something with the people. They all bring, right, the bride over the threshold or they're all there around the chuppah. It's not necessarily always mifurash, but it, it seems implied that these are very kind of public acts as opposed to very private act. I don't know what to make of that yet, but. Uh, right, I think you're right. I think that these last ones are, um, are, are, are almost, yeah, are, are, right, are public, are in front of people. There's certainly people around watching it. Um, and, it, and actually, that's a great lead in for this one other source that I want to show you. It's so small here that you don't even notice it, but there's another source here, Beit Meir, Evan Ezer Simon Nun Hey. I just quoted one little line. <clears throat> he just says, he's talking about the Yichud, and he says, yichud mamish. It doesn't have to be real Yichud. Ki'im b'makom sanua. And the car perish for Tosfos Now, In other words, it just has to be a, a quiet place, a hidden place, but it doesn't actually have to be Yichud Mamch. In other words, there could be other people there, but maybe not too many. Like maybe, you know, a quiet uh, bench in the park, you know, where there's maybe a person walking by occasionally. 
or a makom tzanua, in other words, a, a, a private room. But it could be that people come in and out. So he says it doesn't have to be yichud mamish, and that's going to be a key point uh, because we're, that, that's where we're going to take off. Because if the yich, if the if the chupa is you know is really what we do nowadays with the four poles. By the way, we didn't see anybody say the four poles, right? We didn't see anybody except we saw. Who, did we see something closer? A special place. That's the closest thing we have to it. Um, a special place for the purpose. Or maybe this one, the kerchief, the talit over the head of the couple. Maybe that's it. Maybe the kuppa is just a, a cloth that's over the couple, but it's just not over them directly. It's higher up. But maybe the kuppa could also be in the category of yichud in this sense, that it's a yichud. It's, a, it's like they have a special, I mean, it's not really very tsanua, but a tsanua place for them. Sort of similar. I, mean, I think maybe I'm not sure sure about that, but but the point is that the the yichud doesn't have to be a mamish yichud, as we say, which is important. Uh, welcome. Yeah. Um, every place fits that, except your example for the bench in the park. That's called a shidduch date. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. I sometimes okay. throw out too many examples, uh, <laughs> but if one of them works, that's good. Okay. So I want to stop with this source sheet and go to the Shulchan Aruch. Actually, I want to go straight to the Shulchan Aruch. Uh, I have to stop the share. So get out your Shulchan Aruch. We're not going to look at the uh, tour because it's not really relevant to this simon. Um, how do I? Did I stop the share? No. Okay. Ah, there we go. Stop share. Okay. Um, so let's look at the Shulchan Aruch. And we're just going to go through it slowly, methodically, with some of with the commentaries. Um, at the end, hopefully, we'll come back to that sheet with the with the uh, Aruch HaShulchan. So let's go to Nun Hey. Sif Al. Um, Joel, since you're still here for a few minutes, you want to read a little bit? Sure. All right. Dean Arasalin Yan Mizonot, Kura, Virushav, Im Yeshkituba, which, all right, we're actually not going to do any of those really. Um, exactly. But, uh, In other words, right. This, this simon, right, is really about, like, if you think about it, Din Arusa, when does, when, uh, basically, it's kind of like when does she go from being an Arusa to being not an Arusa to being married? Mm -hmm. So, I have no clue who put the titles on the Shochar on the on this uh, on the Simanim. I don't know if it was the Machaver or not, but uh, so, so. It's a good question. Good question. All right, go All on. right. Ha Arusa Suralevat Livala, Midivrei Sofrim, Kolzmaji Bevet Avia, Vabal Arusato Bevet Hamav. Makinoto makat mardut. Right, so I think we said this right out of the Rambam, if I'm not mistaken, right? So yes, the, yes, very good point. Okay, the Rabbanan uh, and Arusa is cannot um, have sex with her um, her Baal, but uh, as long as she's right, still living in her father's house. So essentially, when she hasn't cr crossed the th threshold, it sounds just like the Rambam here, right? And if if you do, that's that's an Easter de Rabbanan, so you get makat mardut. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, should keep going with the Haga. Yeah. Okay. Ve'afilu uh, biyichud asurim. Right. And it's not just, you know, some sort of sexual relationship, but also just any, any yichud is a sur. For the chen, arus, shehu im arus ato bevait echad, mevarchin, sheva brachot, yit yachdu, a pen yit yachdu. All right. So, so therefore, if they have to be alone, we, we make sheva brachot right there. And so in other words, there's, you know, kala uh, im bracha. Uh, and, uh, and then they're, then they're nesuin. It sounds like right once you've they're in right. the house together and you've made shavu brachot. Well, let's go right to the chelkat um, machok. All right. Um, so he said and bet. So he says. So far we're saying that they're they doing the shavu brachot. Who? Mm -hmm. uh, well, why? Why are we doing it? Because maybe they'll have yichud and the yichud would be forbidden. But if they did shavu brachot, presumably then it's not forbidden because they're well, they're, I don't know, they're married or something. They had a chupa. Great. Should I read it or no? Yeah, go ahead. 
Okay, so uh, I was trying to be very careful translating, so I didn't step into this. But let's see. Afal gav de b'seif she'acharze katav she'ein berkat chatim osen nesuin. Even though later we're going to say that the, the, the brachot themselves don't make nesuin. Mikom akom arus verasato hashoin hashohin yachad bevayit have kechat ser shel shnehem viyichud dideu havi nesuin. All right, umuteret lo achar habracha. All right, so but no, let's right. They're in the space that you know uh, alone, and um, and it's it's it belongs to both of them. That becomes their yehud, and and that that's the nesuin, and therefore they need the bracha to make them you know permitted to one another. So, so the bracha does. Yeah, yeah. So it's like the bracha. You say the bracha, and the bracha is just like we say the bracha before the cheder yichud kilu. And now the cheder, and if and and if they don't have yichud, so then we just said the bracha. Well. For the yichud that will eventually come year, a year from now or whenever it comes, but if they do have yichud, then it's on that. Then that yichud is what makes them marry. Mm-hmm. So then the yichud is not forbidden. You know, sort of retroactively. But v'chach uh, um, osim bihuda, right? And we learn this in the Gemara. I think it's Gemara with the Mishnah of the Gemara, right? That in Yehuda they would um, they would have some sort of sexual relationship in the father-in-law's house. Right, um, be, be between uh, Erosin and Nisuin, and so this is must have been what they did is that they they said Sheva Brachot and they actually had done Nisuin and uh, you know or just in case shall we right. say so. Um, but uh, Vein Isur, uh, by the way, if I remember correctly, the the, the Rabbanan are not happy with what they're doing in Yehuda either. It's not like it's uh, yeah, yeah, a good you're right. Vein Isur Ela Ela Chatan Hadar Bevait Bevait Acher. Uh, all right. Oh, so that's a key okay. point here. Yeah. So, so what is there is he talking about? Ain't is sur. So it's the Khatan's living in a different house, and then he goes to her father's house where she's living, supposedly, and then and then they have sex. What is there is he talking about though? What is there is he talking about? The first one, Arusa. Mm-hmm. Right, the sex with uh, between two betrothed people. Right, which is the Rambam. I was just going to share my screen again. That uh, for those who didn't see this Rambam, let me just uh, share my screen quickly. Just I'll, I'll unshare it for a second. That's this. Just a second. I should learn to do the two finger thing. Um, Here, Haba al Arusato Babait Hamad, this is the Ramba, Makino to Makat Marki. So he's saying that Isser is only when he's not living there all the time, but he just came to visit and then had relations. And that explains the last line of the Rambam, Bahaba al Arusato, the Shem Nisuin, Akhashi Kicha, Mishasha. Uh, 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 sure. Sorry. Yeah, uh, Sorry. Sorry. As soon as he uh, touches her uh, with his genitals, then he has acquired her. So here it sounds like it's permitted. And here he says forbidden. So he's sort of answering that the permitted is when it's well, here he says with well, the shame Well, we're going to see it a little bit more clearly actually in the Beit Shmuel. But he's saying when it's in the when they're living together, then it's permitted. Um, okay, so go on. Um, oh yeah, I'm off mute. Good. Um, no, explain that. Explain. Well, we'll he's go back. It's still. Is he saying it's still toe face? Even though it's not really the proper time, is that what he's saying? Oh. Um, he, well, I'm just just go back to the Michael He says, "Ain isur." I'm saying the isur of the arusa and the arusatao is yeah. not existing. Only el chatan hadar. Sorry, the ain isur el chatan hadar beit acher. Only if he's living in another house. Uba el arusato beit aviha. That's the isur. But if he's living there together with her, then they mm-hmm. say the Sheva Brachot, and then there's really no Isser because it's his Chatzer, and that's Yichud, and that's a proper Yichud, because it's his Chatzer. But if it's not in his house, if it's if he's just a guest visiting, then it's not a proper Yichud, and then it, then, then the Brachos are not designed for that. Aaron's, Aaron's hands, yeah. 
Oh, why, why are we saying that the Isser he's talking about is the Isser of the Mahaber and not the Isser of the Ramah? Um, why is that different? Well, isn't the Mahaber saying you can't have sex with her and the Ramah is saying you actually can't have even yihud, without yihud. sex, you can't have Yehud? Ah, okay. You're right. Okay, you're right. So maybe you're right. I was going on, you're right. I was going on the uh, Mechaber. It could be, you're right. It could be that he's just talking about the Yichud. And then there's no, but then it's hard to understand that though. Why? It comes out the same thing. It comes out the same thing because even if it is the Yichud, right. it's the Yichud, okay. but that's, the Yichud is permitted in the child. Maybe, so right. Maybe the comparison to the Rambam is not exact. Maybe when I brought in the Rambam, it's not exact because the Rambam is, is uh, talking about Bia. And I'm, I'm just saying it's the same, it's well, kind the, of the same idea. Two things. The, the Chalka Mechokek and Aleph seems to say that the Isur on Bia implies an Isur on Yichud. So I'm not sure there's such a like distinction to be made there. Um, the other question I had, and maybe this is, is like whether we think it's, we can make anything of the fact that he is, the way he writes it is, is that it's their shared chatzer, and at right, and then he says who have a nisuin. So I, I'm trying to understand whether that's like it has to be dafka theirs as opposed to his, which is how they normally talk about it, or whether maybe this is just like the way he's writing. I don't know. No, um, I thought it because he has to have a share in it when he's in his father. I think his chiddush is that he's living in his father's house. You might think that it's his, that he's a guest, and he's saying no. If you're living there as a permanent resident then it's like it's your property and therefore that's also your yichud and therefore the yichud counts as a proper yichud and therefore it's permitted. Okay. Because yeah. it's yichud in your chatzer and it, that's the kind of yichud that creates marriage. And so he's creating marriage. So it's not, so what would be forbidden? Yichud or, or relate. I mean, I was saying or relations because the Rambam talks about in terms of relations, but yichud where it's a permitted, where it's the type of yichud that would create marriage. But when yeah. you're a guest, when you're just visiting for an hour, that's not the proper <coughs> yichud. So it's not your right. chatzer. I, nonetheless, nonetheless, I'm g- going on Sarah's side a little bit, that uh, there's no emphasis that Dafka has to be his, you know? It could be a bayat that is, uh, you know, the other sheet of, it's a bayat that they share or, or whatever. Yeah, the bite that they share. So I don't know. It's a it's a decision not to uh, emphasize his his bite. Well, 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 we have to make a distinction between the the Chagam is saying that it's permitted when he lives there and it's not permitted when he's visiting for a few hours. Right. No, no, no. That's for sure. You're right. So why is that? So why is that? Because when he's visiting for a few hours, it's not his chaser. And At so all. what does that matter? What does that At matter? All. Because that yeah. because then the yichud is in a chatzer of somebody else that doesn't count. I think he's saying, like the Rambam, that you need to have yichud, proper yichud. But Yavni, you want to say something? Uh, yeah, my impression was that it's talking about a case where the, 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 the couple getting married were already living together in the same house. Yes. Like, for example, if they're cousins and it's a big family house and they're getting married. And so that's, that's why it's talking about their house as opposed to his house. Uh, Mm, I didn't think so, but maybe I thought it's talking it says, about his living. It says that. Uh, if it would I'm, be like that. That. Like, what is the situation where they're because uh, they got engaged and uh, he left at you know his home and went to live in the in the large house of the in the, in the where his where his kala lives. So he's moving into her house in this case. Yes. Okay. And uh, they're going right, to get so married. Few, where they're going to get married in a few weeks or in a month, right? As opposed to he goes over like because they're trying to plan the meal for the wedding, right? And he goes over right. there and to have a chat with her, right? And that's, that, that, exactly. that's where it gets problematic. That yichud would be forbidden. Yeah, that yichud would be forbidden, even with brachot. That's his mm-hmm. point. Yeah. Uh, and and, and it's saying it ties into our idea of chuppah that chuppah, according to the Rambam, or uh, has to, or at least according to one opinion in the Ran, has to be 
owned by the uh, Khatan. But the whole, the whole Kiddush here is that uh, we don't actually need his property, but uh, it needs to be K. If it's actually his family is property in any way, and he has, I don't know, uh, 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 some part on it because of, uh, I don't know, ancestral or anything like that, it wouldn't be any Kiddush here. Right, no, exactly. No, that the Kiddush is that even though it's not his, but, but he's living there. That, that gives you a certain shaykhut to the place. Now, now that you're living there, it's your place. It's like, you're, you know, your children say it's their, it's their home, right? My, my, my under bar mitzvah, you know, my, my children who live at home, they say it's my room, you know, but it's really, of course, everything is not nothing. They don't own anything. But they feel, and they should feel, they should feel that it's theirs. But when a, when a person's living in your house, he has a certain rights. He has certain rights. You can't like, you don't, can't just tell him, from one minute to the next, leave. He, he, you know, he has certain rights to your house at that point. Once you've accepted him as a guest. So, questions? Okay. So let's just finish this up. Inami. Looks like Rev. Landis is trying to say something, but he's muted. Oh, you unmute yourself. It's my, I unmute myself. It's a grandfather story. So my. <laughs> But I am a grandfather, Zaidi. So my children lived with us for several years. And my grandson, whenever he, they no longer, my grandson ever comes back, he goes to his old bedroom. He says, I'm going to my bedroom. He goes inside, he's forehead. And he closes the door. Right. So what's he doing? It's his room. His room. Okay. Right. Right. That, exactly. I think that is the hit issue. Uh, so, so read on, Joel. Inami. Joel left and handed it off to me. Oh, okay. So he wrote in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Clever. Okay. Well, you don't have so much to read. Sure. Inami dia chol abo alel v'veit chamav l'shem nisuin k'moshe she'echto v'samuch b'shem harif v'aran. Now, right. This he says he could have relations with her. Now, uh, in his father-in-law's house, as long as it's l'shem kedushin. So, if it's l'shem kedushin, then the nisuin. whole what nisuin, I think, right? Oh, sorry, nisuin. The shame nisuin. Sorry, I'm speaking kedushin in English. Uh, the shame nisuin, for the sake, in other words, kedushin in the, in the general term of marriage. The shame nisuin, for the purpose of marriage, then you don't need that requirement that he has a ownership of the place. Uh, that's, the, that's the way I understood it. No, Yavni, you, you, you're giving me a quizzical look. Maybe I give another one. Also, another possibility is that he could come, he could have relations with her in Beit Hamav. I want to say, even if he's not living there, uh, maybe not, maybe I'm putting too much into it. Even if he's not living there, but now it's the shame kedushin, so then it's okay. Then it works. Yeah. That's the way I read it. Now, actually, you know what? We're going to clarify this now immediately in the in the Beit Shmuel. He's going to give. He's a little bit longer, and he's going to say a little bit different, but very, but a little bit similar. So maybe, um, here's Sarah. You want to read the Beit Shmuel on this on Aleph? Sure. Mivarchim um, brachot. Right, so the same question. Same question. Why? Why do we all? It, it seems like we don't allow shavar brachot v'lo kupa. So then, why? What are you? What is he talking about? The yesh lomar. Alpi masha katav haran reish kedushin laharif ve'arambam achar ha kedushin sarich kupa ve'az mutar lavo alei afilu. So I guess right, that so, answers your question. Yeah, so it's explain that. So in your own words. He's gonna say that generally you need chupa after the kiddushin in order for it to be permitted for them to have sex. Um even but, if the sex that they have is just general sex. If the sex they have is just general sex. But if they have sex for the purposes of nisu'in, then you don't need another thing that's chuppah. 
Right. But presumably, therefore, sex... implying that the chuppah is done, like that sex is the chuppah in some way. Exactly. You know, so what is the isser? The isser is to have general sex without chuppah. And that's what he says, right? He says, Asur levo haleha shelo l'shem nisuim. If it... How does that even, like, can't we just apply in Adam Osebila to be allowed to know it and, like, assume that it's all the shame to swing? Like, what else no, are they doing? We saw on the Gemaras. A, we saw on the Gemaras. Maybe he thinks he's already married to her. Right, Maybe he thinks he's, he's already married to her. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I remember. remember it's not just okay. that you... There is... There's three kinds of... You know, I don't know there's three kinds, but there's there's kind of three kinds of intentions in sex. One is the shame to swing. One is the shame to And one is general. Just general sex and lishem kiddushin is a uh, separate from the shem nisuin oh yeah you're right so there's four you're right that's an interesting question what if you have sex lishem kiddushin when it should have been the shem nisuin i don't think anybody ever discussed that question <laughs> well we discussed if the we someone did discuss if the sex lishem <laughs> kiddushin if like kiddushay bia also affects nisuin that we did see right and that's what the Rambam says, like afilu afilu asa kiddush afilu asa kiddush You have to do it again. So, yeah, you yeah. have to do chupa after. Yeah, yeah, but what if you made a mistake and the second time you thought I'm going to do sex for the shem kiddushin? Yeah, I don't think right. anybody talks about it right. because I don't think there's a difference. My point is that nobody talks about it. I don't think there's really a difference. I don't think that the intent has to be specifically kiddushin versus specifically you have to have. Sex for the purpose of creating a marriage, whether it's the whole the, question here is on whether the it's the of, kiddushin or the nisuin. The whole question here is on the essence of kiddushay bia. The shita says me that the Rambam has a, a little problem with like uh, kiddushay bia. The whole co concept of it is actually being de facto a married couple. So like uh, the whole distinction between uh, the shem nisuin and the shem kiddushin is completely useless. Like the babli, you can actually play with it a bit, but like uh, the whole concept of kiddushay bia. Like to say more. Uh, the whole concept of kiddushay bia here can be understood as like enacting marriage. It's like a, it's like kinyan mashicha in some way. Like this, uh, I'm sorry for the like the uh, yeah, okay. for the ashva, but like it, when you take an animal and you actually like put it closer to you, you show that you have some connection to it. When a man has intercourse with a woman, he shows that he's de facto married to her. It's like a it's a, it, the whole like philosophical concept of right, but there has to be an intent there has to be an intent of course but that's part of the thing like when when they're actually having intercourse they're not like doing something symbolic that like shows that someday they will be married they're de facto living marital life yeah but that not not if it's not if it's the first one not if it's kiddushin no, but that's that's part of the point. That the Shita Sirusham, there some even some Akhroinian that say that Nafkamil Allah can be that the Shita Sirusham, you can actually have Kiddushay Biya without Aidim. They're like they're like completely uh, mm -hmm. intrinsically uh, right. like made together. And the Bhavi like dismisses it a bit, but like actually it's it's still also a bit of the same. You are, you need a deem, but you are, you're still making a marital act, you're still making an act of that's a combination of Kiddushin and Nisuin together. Very interesting. Very interesting. Thank you. We didn't really look at the uh, Yushami, but uh, thank you. It's very interesting. Um, okay. Let's, uh, so, so yeah, he has to have his relations for the sake of marriage. And then even if it's not a proper Yichud, it still works. The shame is suin, ain't sorry, chupa. And then he doesn't need chupa. He needs kiddushin, of course, but he doesn't need chupa. The biak is enough. Okay, we go, go on, uh, Rachel. Im kain. Im kain, afla data, ramba, mutar lava, leva vet, avia, eleva vet, avia, tsarich, shayit gavain, la shame nisuin. Right. So, so here he says explicitly. That yeah. this, that this, this, that the Rambam, when he says it's Asr and you get Makat Marduk, that's when he's not doing it for the shame of Nisuin. But if he would do it the shame of Nisuin, then it'd be permitted. And that's the end of that Rambam that we saw, where he says, um, 
that uh, that you could do bia for the shem nisuin. And then you, then obviously you wouldn't get machut marduk. But we were discussing that once, if you remember. We thought maybe you would also get machut marduk. You would, and I said, that's crazy. You're not going to get machat marduk if you're doing a mitzvah. So, <laughs> okay. So now va mordechai. Va mordechai sabar velo bracha asura. Sorry, mehadvar mevarchim shava brachot vetulo chayshinan lerivii shaloi kavein l'shem nisuin kivan deika heiter lefan. Mishum hachi. The mem hey is mishum hachi. Mishum hachi. So what is Mordechai's um, opinion? Um, he's going to say that it's um sabar velo bracha asura mishum hachim bevarchim shabar rachot that it's it's always it's collabor- asur. What it's, he's holds the Mordechai holds that it's always it's all asur. asur. It's, it's always asur. asur to have relations with her unless you did the shabar brachot. Right. And in there's no words, sort of there's no getting away around that like in other words, statement. I don't know if we saw right. it so clearly, but what 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 he was saying before was that according to the Rambam, you don't have to say the Shabbat Brachot. Because once you're doing the shame, maybe he's gonna say it after. Once you're doing once you're doing it in the shame Nisuin, then you don't need to do this other then you don't need the Shabbat Brachot. But the Mordechai holds that the Shabbat Brachas are like a special requirement to Rabbanan that you must do. Below brachas asur bishum hachi bivarchi shemah brachas. You have to because you can't have even bia the shem kiddushin the shem nisuin unless you said shemah brachas. Yeah. Uh, um, and we're not worried about people that are going to have their specifically not to get married. Uh, we're not going to worry about such a case. We're assuming, in other words, there's no such thing as having it the shem kiddushin. It's kind of like what you were saying, sir. In other words. The Mordechai is saying, no, we always assume that everybody's doing the shame, the shame uh, nisu'in. I have to keep changing. Uh, the shame nisu'in. Everybody thinks that. So what is the isser that you get machat mardut for? That you didn't, that according to the Rambam, according to the Mar- Mordechai, according to the Rambam, how does the Mordechai explain the Rambam? That you didn't say Sheva brachot. Then you didn't say Sheva brachot. So now you're going to get beaten. Of course you had the relationship with the Shem Kedushin. I find that a much more convincing reading of like what's actually going on in Chazal. But anyway, just because like otherwise, what is what is the Isur of Kalavil Racha? Well, you're about to read. Keep reading. You're about yeah, to read. Yeah, okay. Mihuma Shisfer Leila Mordechai, the Kalavil Racha Asurakinida, Nireja Rambam, Lothir Alekin. So the Rambam just doesn't agree with that. Well, no, he's going to explain. You're right. So, first of all, he's asking your question. In other words, it comes yeah. out very nice. According to the Mordechai, now we understand. Kal below bracha asura. That fits beautifully. Mordechai explains that. He explains the Rambam, why the Rambam said. So he says no. So he's going to explain. The Hakatav. The Hakatav. Ires vekanis lechupa vilobirech. Hareze nisu agmura. The kishahini. That's like the Rambam. That's the Rambam. That's the Rambam. He's paraphrasing the Rambam, but that's the Rambam who basically says. If you if you bring her in and do a chuppah, and he doesn't mention anything about brachot, it's gemur. It's, it's it's it doesn't say that you're missing anything. Okay. But you can't do that when she's nida. So it's like a little creative reading of what you can't do that when she's a nida. Maybe. Why? Because. You, you didn't do a real kinsa. You didn't really bring her in because yeah. you didn't bring her in in a way that you, you didn't could actually... have a marriage, that you could have a rela- relations with her. Okay. Right. But Sarik Lomar, here, here he's going to get to the point. Um, so wait a second. So he says, first of all, reread that, reread that statement in Mesekta Kala. Reread it. it. When it says Kala below bracha, it really means Kala below chupa. Kala below chupa asura. And it says bracha is just a kitzer way of saying chupa because everybody knows that the chupa is where you do the brachas. 
But it really, what the, what the Gemara meant is kala below chupa is forbidden. And wait a second. And now you got to read on, though. Um, and he's not um, just making that up. He's quoting the Mahari who says that. Right. Uva chuvat harosh. Uva chuvat harosh. And the base Yosef brings it. And the base Yosef, right? Commercial Kasab Yosef Siman Nun Zain about how brachot ain't max, right? And the, the, the brachot are not generally. actually, they're not actually required. All they need is chupa. And if you're, I think he's going to say, well, and if you have, and if you have relations, if you have marital relations, that's your chupa. Yeah. Right? So you didn't do a kala below chupa because the merit, the, the bia l'shem nisuin is a chupa. So you didn't violate that because you did bia l'shem nisuin, and that's your chupa, and it meant kala below chupa, and you did a chupa. What what was the Gemara forbidding that? It was forbidding exactly what we just said. It's forbidding what, what the Rambam, what we, how we explained the Rambam before that l'shem l'shem znut l'shem stam stam relations, not l'shem kedushin. It looks like Yavni has something to say. Yeah, Yavni. Oh, a couple of things. First of all, uh, that is a direct quote from the Rambam. It's just in a different place. It's Ilchot uh, Yud Yudvav. Ah, okay. Ires v'kines l'chupa v'lo b'irech b'irkat achatanim harezo nesua gmura v'chozer u'mavarech afilu achar kama yamin. And then it says, lo t'nesa nida ajetit har. And I was wondering... I, why we think there no one is saying um that the like i like it's not, like that made sense to me that you said the bia itself is the chupa but it doesn't seem like anyone is actually using that language whereas they'll say lots of other things are the chupa but they won't yeah say the everything in, i i saw it somewhere i saw it somewhere yeah. maybe we'll okay. see it today if we get there but yeah I, that's what i'm saying <laughs> i'm explaining it you're right i'm, I'm giving you a little bit uh i think i probably said maybe i got it maybe we'll see it in the Arach I definitely saw that idea. It's not my own chiddush, but yeah, that's what that's that's the explanation you have to say. He has the chuppah. It's just the nisui, the 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 bia, the shem nisui is the chuppah. Okay. Um, so, what are the brachot? Are the brachot providing the kavana, moving moving from moving from uh, bia tsunut? Which would be a default position. Biastam would be biatsunut. Well, it's a machlok. It's a machlok. According to the Mordechai, the brachot. That's what I'm saying, right. Yeah. According to the Mordechai, the brachot are, de, are once you've done the brachot, then we're indicating to you that now your bias that you're going to be having with this woman are going to be the shem kedushin. Right. It provides, it provides the kavana. Right, but according but to the say, Rambam, but you say then. I mean, I just repeat myself. But you would say then that if you don't have brachot, then you have a kind of like a default position that, in absence of kavana, the state of kavana, what you have is biatzanut, friendly bia, but nonetheless biatzanut. <laughs> right, that's a nice point. That's a nice point. That's an excellent point. Um, the in other words, the, the brachot change, allow us to create a hazaka about your kavana. And now, once we've said the brachot, we're going to say that your kavana is the shem nisuin. According to the Rambam, uh, there is no required, the brachas are really just shevach. They don't really do anything. They're just shevach. And... Yeah, but that's the, the whole chupa that, that, that provides the... And the chupa is really what the Gemara means yeah. when the Gemara says yeah. the kala below, kala below chupa. Rabban provides a brutal, minimalist uh, kavana idea. Let's get let's get married. Okay, that's it. Yeah, but even if it's only shevach, uh, shita saritva, the known uh, the known ritva on brachot, that says that even the shita she or marriage she mitzvot tzuchot kavana that you actually need the yeah. explicit kavana to be uh, to be yotze uh, dechova. The Ritva mm. says that the Shevach, you say before doing a mitzvah, like gets you in the state of mind that you're actually doing. Uh, so okay. we're publicly saying here, this is a marriage. Mm. They did the brachos uh, and they required. did the whole nigun. But the point is, the point is, it's not required. According to the Ramam, it's not required to do it. And therefore you, but what is required is to have kavana l'shem nisu'in. And that must be, and we don't make a hazak about that. You must be explicit about that. And then once you're doing your bia, the shem nisuin, then that's called the chupa, 
and you don't have a problem of kala below bracha, because it really means kala below chuppah, and you have chuppah. Of course, this is an explanation, a complicated explanation in the Rambam. The Rambam never says any of this. The Rambam never says that uh, how he explains this Gemara, kala below bracha, uh, you know, a surah. He never, that's just an explanation that we're giving. Okay, well, let's just finish up this. Uh, wait, anyone have a question at this point? Sarah, go ahead. Yeah, well, based on this, this, um, it seems like the Rambam, it, the part that Yavni just read, it seems like the Rambam is saying um, that you, that you, right, you, Jose Rumivarech, a filo, a filo kama yamin, that you have to go back and say it. So if, yeah. if that's true, then the whole, pr it can't be that what it's supposed to be doing is creating the kavana. Exactly. But you already did that. So you why do you need that. to say these are now? They're, shabach. Shabach. They're... It's shabach. Yeah, you can right, still okay. do shabach. You know, it's like you come across the sea and you, you can bench Gomel, you know, several days later. Several days you later. Can, yeah. You can do shabach after the event. It doesn't have to be before. We just do right, it before. And you can set the kavana some other way. The Rambam holds like, the kavana needs to be. Uh, you need to have. You need yeah. to have your kavana. You need to have it. Right. Okay. You need to have your kavana. We're not going to make a hazaka about your kavana. We can ask you, but we're not going to make a hazaka. The Mordechai is saying we make a hazaka. Once you said these, these. That's what that's what Rav Land is saying. Once you said the brachas, then we're going to say we have a hazaka now on your kavana. Um, which, by the way, is a much more workable halachic system. You don't want a halachic system where the guy can say, oh, this was my kavana, oh, that was my kavana. We, we'd rather have uh, statements of uh, normative behavior and then make the halacha be uniform. And then also she knows what's going on. Yeah, exactly. It could be very right? misleading. Because like, <laughs> it's like there for everyone to see. Right. Her. Oh, you can't back out of it. And you can't back out of finishing this uh, big shmuel. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, where were we? Uh, okay. Vichuvada Rosh, Bet Yosef. Okay. Mihu Rashi. Mihu. Whoa, I lost my. Okay, now. Oh, Mihu Rashi, Vatos, Vatsferalan, Kipirusha, Mordefai, Brachot, Mamash Kaman. Kamosha Katav Rish Ktubot. Lefiza Yishlomar, Lididehu. Im lo barhu dina kenida mamash ve in la to sefet ktuba. So essentially, Rashi and Chos vote follow the Mordechai and think that you, she's like, read Asura kenida in a kind of plain way. And then therefore, that she also, like, a, like, she doesn't, like, she doesn't get there. She's still not married. She's still not married. She's still not really married. Right. Right. Um, yeah. So now use another Terry's. Yeah. For Rashi. We can read, we can read as um, Guzma. Yeah. She's not actually Nida, right? It's not actually, it's just. Sort of, and so therefore, it could be okay, could work. What could, what could work? What could work? Um, having yeah. sex with her, the shame is to in below bracha. Without bracha, right. So we saw two different approaches. One approach basically is to say that the Gemara, when it says below brachot, means we saw three approaches actually. One is to say it means mama should need the brachot, that's the more. The other approach that he brings at the end here is that you need the brachot, but actually, if you don't have the brachot, it's also okay. And the third approach is to say, you need the brachot, but really what brachot means is chuppah. And you need the chuppah, and the chuppah is really just the kavana of what you're doing. So it's kind of three different explanations of what the, of what the Gemara and the second column really means. Um, okay. So that's just really an interesting, interesting little uh, digression, really. Um, let's go back to the Ramah. Well, let's start from the beginning of the Ramah again. Um, Yadni, you want to read the beginning of the Ramah? Just from the beginning, just to get us up to speed. Sure. From Vafilu? Yeah. Vafilu biyichud asurim. Vafilu biyichud asurim, velachen arus, shehu im arusato, babayit achad, mevarchin sheva barchot, pen yitiachdu. 
מרדכי. ויש אומרים, דאין להם, דא, ויש אומרים, דאין להם לדור ביחד, שלא יקיצו זה בזה מהכל בו. Uh, and so there are those who say that they shouldn't be living together at all bet- while between betrothal and the chupa, uh, lest they fight with each other. Because, yeah, uh, just like you don't have sex before marriage, you don't have fights before marriage. And even just when they're uh, dating before the Kiddushin happens, one should be careful. They shouldn't live together. They shouldn't live together, yeah. Right, you shouldn't live together. You know, it shouldn't be roommates if you're if you have a shidduch going on, because then all of a sudden, what used to be very it cute. It is the roommates is flatmates. First flatmates. Of all, you shouldn't be flatmates if you're. You shouldn't be building mates. Because there's a lot of sexual tension going on. That's well, but it's it's actually the, the opposite. I would imagine. It seems to be the way I read this is that normally two people living together will get annoyed from each other. But if they're having relations together, then they'll be less annoyed with each other. But if you have them in a situation where they're living together and they're not allowed to have relations with each other, then you're left with just getting annoyed with each other. <laughs> I, 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 I agree with what Rob Lund said. I think a lot of the annoyance comes from the um, <laughs> pent up sexual tensions that they can't release. Yeah, mm-hmm. but there's this whole concept that comes up, especially in very late Sika, that they say that people, uh, after Shidduch and after they like actually sign their Shidduch, they shouldn't even meet anymore because they can like find annoying things about each other and then they won't get married. After they got married, I think they, they don't actually be worry because they won't. Uh... After they're married, it's too late. No, no, I think that might be the shot here. You don't want them right. Ah, and by the way, that, that is what happens after. Uh, the betrothal, so you plan the wedding. Plan the wedding is like one of the, the first tests. It's like the Akeda. Will be, it's like, it's awful. It's like really awful. No, no, I think your shot's right. I think your shot's right. Yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense. I think that makes a lot of sense. That it kutsu knows, it's not that it will be causing you that they'll be annoyed with each other, but we're worried that maybe they'll get annoyed with each other and then they'll break off the yeah. shidduch. Right. Right. That's a nice shot. Okay. Okay. Uh, go on, Yabni. The real, if you're really concerned about that, the people you should separate are the in-laws. That's who you should. I don't think in-laws have a say anymore. Most people I know do that even after the marriage. That's true. Thank, thank God things have improved. They don't have a say anymore. Thank God. Okay, <laughs> okay go on. kichavabia asur lo lavoalea. ביה שנייה בבית אביה עד שיביא אותה לתוך ביתו ויתייחד עמה ויפרישנה לו ויפרישנה לו ויחוד זה הוא הנקרא כניסה לחופה והיא הנקרא נישואין בכל מקום. Beto, those two requirements, right? The first one I said in the backwards order. Mm-hmm. is like additional. Also, the Rambam says that, but it's I'm not sure what it, what the you know what the halachic yeah. import of that is. Um, so the, he's basically quoting the Rambam. Uh, go on. והבעל רוסתו לשם נישואין אחר שקידשה מי שיערה בה קנאה ונעשית נשואה והרי היא כי אשתו לכל דבר וצריך לברך ברכת, ברכת חתנים בבית החתן קודם הנישואין. אוקיי. אקשי, אז אם אתה חושב מאוד קודם בבית שמואל, הוא מסביר מה יפרשנו לו אומר. הוא אומר אבל אם הביאו לפי שעה לביתו בעל לה לא הווה נישואין. In other words, בפרי שנו means it's a permanent, it's a permanent status. As opposed to you bring it to your house and you get יחד איתו, but it's a temporary thing. It has to be permanent. Okay, that's kind of a good it's clarification. It's odd language though, I think. Because that's like the, anyway, that's the language we used for, anyway. You're right, for, even for Goyim, you're saying. That's, that's the language we use just to say that, that she's my wife. Sounds like you're saying she's my wife, but I like his explanation. It, it makes, because it's true, you, it has to be permanent. 
Um, but let's go uh, to Dalid in the Chelkat uh, Machoke. Oh, it's the same thing. And he adds in, and it, and it, if it's the Sha'ah, and it's the Lola Shem Shuin, he says. That's not Nisuin. Okay. Um, if he just brought her in, and didn't intend to marry her, if he just brought her in, and didn't intend to marry her, and, and send her back to her father, that's not Nisuin. If he was some kind of uh, rogue, um, that's not called Nisuin. Which, you know, that, that could be an interesting halakhic uh, situation. That could happen. He pretends he's getting married, but it really wasn't. We could use this as a way to say that the marriage is a null. See what I'm saying? He, he brought her into the house. The well, this is all after Kiddushin, though, so we still need a... Oh, yeah, jet, you're right. right. We still, okay. Sorry, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Faulty thinking of mine there. Uh, good point. Um, in any case, in any case, Hey, let's read Yavni. When you read Hey in the Chelka Machoke, Meshem Nisuin, Achar Shekidsha, Leshon Arif, the Perek, what is that? Habal Yimvamto. Habal Yimvamto, Kegon, Debalea, Batar de Kadishla. ועדיין לא נכנס עם הלחופה. ועיין ברן פרק כמה לקידושין, שהקשה כיוון דביעה, דביעה איסור היא, דבא על ארוסתו בבית חמיו, לוקה אינו בדין שתקנה וכולי. יש לומר... That it works. That works. What? So what did he say at the end? Uh, he said, like, the reasoning is that chupa, the whole point of chupa is for the bi'a, and, the, and, it, and it makes, and even without the bi'a itself, it makes you, uh, it affects the nisu'in. All the more so, bi'a, like mamash, should affect the nisu'in a, if it's for so the that's kind of what I was saying before, right? That the that the bia can be chupa. Yeah. Right? The bia, if the chupa allows bia, then bia certainly should allow bia. Right. So bia is a sort of functionally as a chupa. Not the only way you could reason it, but it seems reasonable. Okay. Um, does somebody want to read the Ramah now? Volunteer? I can jump in. All right, go ahead. Um, we left, uh, sorry, we left off at the uh, Where? I'm sorry. We, we, we left off at the Afila um, Bashir uh, below Eris in And then we, the, the, there's the, the, the picking up at the Yesh Omrim? Yeah, the Yesh Omrim. Yeah. The Yesh Omrim, the Chupa, and the Yuchut. Okay, so 
ומקדשה שם ומברכים שם ברכת אירוסין ונישואין. ואחר כך מוליכים אותם לביתם ואוכלים ביחד במקום צנוע. זהו החופה הנוהגת עכשיו, ואין לה כמה סימן סמך בה. Notice that Makom Tsanua, that was what we saw. That's that same language that we saw in the... Uh, yeah, Beit uh, Mayer. Beit Mayer, Beit Mayer. Okay, so, so we just now, so he brings up that um, there are those that say that Chupa is not Yichu, but you have to bring it to your house. And that was the Ran. Remember the Ran said you just need one. You just need to bring it to your house. Beito L'Shem Nisuin. And then we have this Sudar. So wait, so before we get to the Sudar, let's look at the, uh, um, where do I want, Lish, where, Vav, the Chupa Einu Yichud, in the, in the Beit, in the Chalkat Machokek. Vav in the Chalkat Machokek, the Chupa Einu Yichud. Nira de Kule Alma Madu Bedinza, the Ha, Haran, have Raya, the Dinza, in Hagmara. So wait a second. First of all, he says, everybody agrees that you don't need the Yichud. Nira de Kule Alam, or the Bedinza, the Chupa Eno Yichud. Because the Ran brought a proof from the Gemara. That's already a big, sort of a strong statement. Right. And the Gemara says, I mean, Amana mean Hanisuin, Ainla Elamana. Right, so the Gemara said that, that an Almana from the Nisuin, and there are witnesses that said she didn't have relations, she wasn't even in alone with him, but yet it's called Minha Nisuin, so she was married. So you see that there must be such a thing as marriage without Nistara, without being a Yichud. Okay. Um, no, but Beit Isha in, in the house of her husband. Oh, the Beit Isha, I'm sorry, yeah, right, her husband. Okay. So, uh, right, he brings his pus, he brings his pus. In Beit Isha Nidara, Mash, so that so she's she, as long as she's in her husband's house, she's called her, uh, it's called she's called an Isha, an Isha, right? Beit Isha, the house of her husband, Nidara, then he has like dominion over her. And therefore, you see that all you need is um, that he's that he's under her reshut, and you don't need uh, that you need yichud. You don't need yichud, but you need to be in the house. That was one of those those two opinions the Ran brought. Let's uh, take a break here. It's ten eleven. Let's take a break here for five minutes. Let's get back at like, uh, and let's get back in like seven minutes or something like that, like 10, 18. Okay, great.